Good afternoon. My name is Pedro Mejia from Montgomery College Trio Educational Opportunity Center. And today we will be talking about uh, how college is possible uh, and uh, the, an overview of the steps to take to um, attend community college, university, training programs. Um, <clears throat> So this is what we do at TRIO Educational Opportunity Center. <clears throat> we help, uh, <clears throat> we do admissions counseling. So um, if you will apply to in-state or out-of-state universities, <clears throat> we provide, uh, for those who, students who qualify, we provide a, a voucher so that you don't have to pay for applying for admissions. <clears throat> we help um, applying for financial aid, find the scholarships. So we help you find uh, state scholarships, scholarships in colleges. We also offer free practice GED test for those students who have not finished high school. We do academic advising, career advising, and financial literacy. <clears throat> so, the steps to apply for a post-secondary education are different if you attend a community college to uh, obtain an associate degree <clears throat> or a certificate, certificate program or non-credit certifications. Uh, if you would attend a four-year college, a bachelor's degree, it's, uh, the process is different as well. In some areas is similar, but um, so um, these are the, uh, so the post-secondary education can also be an apprenticeship program, career training, schools. So the admission process uh, to a community college is open admissions process. So what that means is that you can apply anytime to community college. So you will complete, the first step to do is completing an admissions application. And now you can complete the admissions applications online. You will take a, a placement test, the AccuPlacer, <clears throat> and then the scores indicate your English level or math level. These are the services that we offer, that we already talked about. Um, and the goal today is to talk about an overview of how to apply for admissions up to registration at a community at Montgomery College. But I, we want to talk also a little bit about the process to apply for universities. So if you um, apply to a community college, you can obtain an associate's degree and then you can transfer to a four-year program. Or for some students, they just wanna uh, get some training so they could do a certificate, which is one year, where they can take non-credit certifications. For example, you could take a CNA program at a community college. Um, a four-year colleges are, the admissions process is more competitive and there you can obtain a bachelor's degree, master's degree, or doctorate degrees or certification programs. <clears throat> Apprenticeship uh, training and programs, uh, they are done through the state of Maryland and some organizations, and we help you connect you with uh, those programs. Also, you could attend uh, career training schools. So the admission process at a community college, as I was saying, is an open admissions process. That means that you can apply anytime, so uh, for any term. For example, you can apply now for summer or for the fall. And once you are admitted to a community college, you are admitted for life. So you could come back anytime to take classes. So the admissions uh, application, you have to complete it online and it's free. Before you had to pay $25, but now it's free. Then after you take the admissions, um, after you apply for admissions, you will take 
an acuplacer to see your level in English and math. That will tell Montgomery College whether or not you have to take uh, the English 101 or other courses. <clears throat> when you apply for a four-year college, the admission process is more competitive. So that means that you have to complete a really long admissions application, um, submit um, required documents. It could be essays, um, recommendations from teachers, and you will also have an interview, complete the, your SAT, ACT exam scores, and you will need your high school college transcripts. Apprenticeship programs, uh, to get admitted, you register with an apprentice, apprentice provider employed, and you're employed with a, a participating employer. And you also get paid for, uh, for your training. So you attend training and you attend school. The attendance is really strict. Um, the work requirements. Career training schools, you just apply for admissions and the student uh, pays the training and you might be eligible to receive financial aid funds. Uh, one example could be Lincoln Tech for that. <clears throat> so first step to apply to Montgomery College, you, uh, uh, you go to here to this website. Um, oops. So you apply for admissions, make sure when you apply for admissions, that you enter all the correct information. So can you see my screen right now? So you will go to montgomerycollege.edu, um, apply now, and then apply now again, and you will apply online and you will create an account, first time user creation account. You will create the student login and the PIN number, and then you will log in and you will start entering your information. Make sure that all the information that you enter is correctly correct. Uh, check your social security number and you will enter it. They will ask for it. If you don't enter your social security number, when you apply for financial aid, they will not process your financial aid. Also, if you are a permanent resident, make sure that you indicate that, um, that you have a permanent residency and enter your uh, green card number in the application. So this will take, the application will take about 15, 20 minutes to complete. And then, um, they will send you an email with your student number and your MyMC login. Also make sure that when you apply for admissions, you apply for financial aid. Submit your high school transcripts to our admissions after graduation. Complete the disability support services intake form if needed. Okay, so apply for admissions, apply for financial aid, submit your high school transcripts, and um, if you um, will apply for disability, uh, complete the intake form at montgomerycollege.edu, DSSS. If you are applying for the DREAM Act, you will apply online as well. And here's the information, montgomerycollege.edu, Maryland, DREAM. <clears throat> so after you have applied for admissions and they send you the, um, your M number, your student number, you will claim your account. And the way to claim uh, your account, you log in to montgomerycollege.edu and click on uh, My MC to claim your account. <clears throat> uh, you will enter your student number. After you have claimed your account, if you have a, when you if you have applied for financial aid make sure that you complete your financial aid forms by clicking uh, financial aid. And everything now, you have to complete it online and send it online. So after you have sent the forms, they will also send an email to the parent and the parent needs to sign the form 
um, through dynamic forms. Make sure that uh, you take the Alex math and Alex or the math accuplacer to see your math level in your uh, if you're taking ESL classes or um, <clears throat> you also need to take the ESL uh, test. And for more information, you can uh, type assessment at the Montgomery College website, and it will give you all the steps needed. The test, uh, if it's the math or the ESL or the ESL or the Accuplacer, it will be taken online. Uh, you don't have to go in person anymore. Also make sure that you apply for the foundation scholarship. This foundation scholarship allows you to get between $250 and uh, $2,500 per semester, and you can always renew it. It's a good idea to apply because sometimes some students, they don't qualify for free money or, or Pell Grant. So it, it's important to, to do that. Um, complete your financial aid forms. Um, also access my MC to complete the um, student orientation online, the advising questionnaire, because if you don't complete all of this, they, you will not be able to register. Attend an uh, academic orientation online by clicking on the this icon on the Starfish once you're inside your account. And through uh, once you activate your account, you will be able to make an appointment with a counselor. To, so fourth step is to achieve, prepare for the semester, uh, make sure that you have your books ready, uh, make sure that you know what classes, where, what buildings you will attend, the hours, um, you will register for classes online, pay tuition and fees, obtain your Montgomery College ID from Student Life, obtain the parkis, parking pass in college wide services. You can purchase or rent your books. And then last step, attend classes. I guess I got stuck here. <clears throat> this is my information. If you need to make an appointment, we help you with all the steps that we explain, um, applying, applying for financial aid. And if you need to make an appointment, you can uh, send me an email or text me. And here's the information for the staff to um, make an appointment. You will need to complete an intake form. I'm not sure if you can see the. No, you can. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Mr. Mejia. Um, just wondering um, for when students, um, when um, Montgomery College Trio EOC works with them, uh, can you just kind of explain a little bit more about how they then use um, that program to connect them either to Montgomery College for work related or non, um, or I'm um, sorry, credit or non credit courses? Yes, so, so we um, we give the students one hour or longer appointments and we, you know, every student has different needs. Some students, they're actually just looking for work or they need to build their resume. So we help them in those areas. We have also helped some students, you know, uh, look for work, create their resumes. Um, we also, um, help them decide on a career. So we used uh, what's called Career Coach. Um, and Career Coach is a really useful tool because it helps you just enter your information and then at the end it will kick a resume for the student in, in Microsoft Word, for example. After that, um, you can, we upload the resume to indeed.com uh, and um, 
also the results of the um, of the career test tell students about companies in our area that might be able to hire them as uh, interns, for example, or uh, entry level jobs. So um, that's one uh, thing we do. The other thing um, we help students with is finding scholarships in the non-credit side. For example, the, we have the career path scholarship we gives out one thousand dollars, and they can get training. They can only apply once for that scholarship. But um, if they participate, for example, with HOC uh, housing, they provide eighty-five percent of uh, the cost of some classes, and the career path scholarship uh, pays for the other part. So that scholarship provides training in. Um, entry-level jobs, for example, CNA, uh, medical assistant, um, commercial driver's license, and others. It's, uh, it's a long list. Um, the other scholarship is called the Sequence Scholarship. That provides um, training in um, Amazon Web Servicer, for example, um, CNA, child care, um, plebotomy technician. They give out $2,000 on the first sequence and 2000 in the second sequence. And for that scholarship, the students need to uh, complete their FAFSA application online um, because they want to see the level of funding that they will have. Um, in, in the application, you do it online and you email it. So that's one of the easiest um, applications to, to complete for scholarships. The only part is that it's limited. It doesn't have as, many, as much training as the other ones. Um, so we also, so our goal at EOC is to connect students, to help them find you know work so that they can study because of many students they want to study and work so um, we also connect them with the WIOA program through the um, through Maryland that's called the workers investment act and uh, for that the students need to be um, US citizen or permanent resident and they have to have a high school diploma as well so that training, you can get training in any any county in Maryland. Is that um, what you wanted, the information you needed? Yes, thank you. And another question would be, how do, um, what kind of supports do you all provide to, um, to students in terms of helping them to balance the work, um, that work-life balance? Um, what <clears throat> I'm not sure if I understand. so balance work in school. Yeah. So if they are um, employed and they are also taking, let's say, a workforce development um, course, how do they, um, as you know, 17, 18, 19 year olds, helping them kind of balance uh, those things? Yes. So we we offer um, we employed uh, we have student workers at Montgomery College. And so they can study and work. So we make sure that they don't take, they're not working as much. Like, you know, some students, they would be working eight hours and then school. So, that, uh, and we we also have uh, brochures that help uh, guide students, you know, like, and um, guide them, for example, if you're taking a three credit class, um, you have to study at least uh, six hours. You know, you have to dedicate time for homework. And, and so you have to be aware of um, how many hours you can work per week. So um, <clears throat> we help in that area. Mr. Mejia, I have another question. Can you talk a little bit about the partnerships that Montgomery College has with um, universities that are local or colleges across the country for students who wish to further their education 
after MC, whether it's in a non-credit course that they're from a non-credit program that they're taking at Montgomery College or a credit program? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so Montgomery College has a partnership with the universities at Shady Grove. And it's really cool because you, you can, uh, um, after you finish a two-year program in Montgomery College, you can study in Rockville and you don't have to travel like far. And you can, um, they don't offer all the majors at the Shady Groves universities, but they offer, uh, you know, social work, for example, um, and others. Let me uh, see if you can. <clears throat> So they have uh, nine universities at Shady Grove. Can you, let me see, new share. <clears throat> so, and they have 80 degrees. And here are the universities. So different universities offer different majors. UMBC offers this. And uh, you can also do graduate school there, history, political sciences, social work. So when you get your major, you will um, get it from UMBC if you studied that. Okay. Um, is this the question that, um, do I answer your question or do you have any other um, ideas of um, partnerships that you wanted? So that, that answers my question, thank you. Okay. And uh, so when you study at Montgomery College, you can transfer to other community colleges as well. Or let's say that you wanted to study um, uh, dental, to be a dental hygienist, you can take the uh, prerequisites at Montgomery College, and then you can transfer to Howard Community College, for example. So um, classes that you take at one community college or university that you don't get lost. You can actually transfer them to other universities in the country or community colleges in Maryland or uh, universities. So um, there, are, there, there are advantages about uh, studying that at a community college. Uh, for example, the classes are smaller, you live closer to home, it might allow you to work and study while you're in a community college, or you could um, take a certi uh, short program like a certificate, for example, uh, one year program in, um, I forget the name of the program, but it's, it's about a program about um, sleep. You study one, uh, sleep science, you study one year and you can potentially earn 60,000 per year. So um, so there are short programs, certificates at Montgomery College that um, have a high earning potential in that, you know, you can, st you can start building your career at Montgomery College. Is there any, any other questions? No, thank you, Mr. Mejia, yeah. uh, for presenting this information on College is Possible. So one of the things that we um, also wanted to stress and emphasize with today's conference is that while although um, students are going to be entering into the workforce, that 
that doesn't have to be the end. Um, because a lot of times what you, what students, what you all may want to do is um, become your own boss at some point, or you may want to uh, consider going into a field. So how do you best manage that? So if you are, let's say, going and you want to open up your own IT company or you're an electrician or you're going into a nursing program and you want to run your own facility or have your own landscaping company or what have you, then we wanted to make sure that we had our higher educational partners here to help you kind of bridge the gap between being in the workforce as well as continuing with your education um, beyond high school. Yes, you could take um, courses in accounting. You can take business courses um, because you want to know how do you manage your money that way, especially for exactly. um, being an entrepreneur. So again, thank you, Mr. Mejia from Montgomery College, Ontario EOC program. Um, the information was very, very helpful. Thank you for having me.